All righty, ladies, I'm back. Part four. Rejection we talked about in one, two, and three. Now we're going to talk about shame. Because kind of those things, those two spirits just work together, kind of. And that's what the devil is really using against us. But we got to understand, women, and we got to know that Isaiah 53, 5 says, By his stripes, I said by his, some translation may say wounds. I like wounds, too. But by his stripes, and I put wounds in parentheses, we are healed. We are healed from this. I'm healed from this womb of rejection. I'm healed from this womb of shame. This is time, this is the time in the physical realm, but also in the emotional realm. You know, God can heal your emotionals. You know, you've been, you know, I know I hear a lot of people say, well, just women just so are, so emotional. And we are. Oh, we are. We're very emotional. <laughs> and I thank God, you know, we're made that way. And um, see, healing is provided through the cross. It's already been provided. Not just my physical body may be sick, but like I said in my, in my earlier segments, the mind, you may be sick in your mind, hallelujah, and healing is yours. The blood of Jesus is able to cleanse a contrite heart, contrite spirit. The, the word of God, the blood of Jesus is able to go inside of this brain and to take it and transform the renewing of your mind the blood of jesus is able to heal the blood of jesus is able to deliver hallelujah i thank him for the blood i tell you where will we be without the blood of jesus where will we be without the cross you know a lot of people don't preach the cross but i like to throw that in you know because if it wasn't for jesus going to the cross he went to the cross and he done all of this he got he he, he went to the cross for all of this women this needs to be taught in the body of christ because we don't have to walk around here with these wounds and with these with these um with these wounds and these hurts because jesus christ has already went to the um, cross for all of this. He went to the cross for our healing, our healing emotionally, our healing physically, um, our body, soul, mind, and spirit. He went to the cross. He went to the cross for it. So we got to let the devil know. I have power over you. I have been saved. I have been delivered. I have been healed. And you can't stop me. <laughs> healing is mine. Hallelujah, because over 2,000 years ago, my father, son, my father's son, my father's son went to the cross. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I like saying that. You know why? Because I didn't have a father, like I said before, have a father growing up. So now that I'm saved and now that I have a relationship with the one father, <laughs> He's always been my father, but I didn't know him. I didn't know that then. But now I get to experience the love. Mm, my God. Just thinking about it makes me cry. Now I get to experience the love of a father. Because I'm going to tell you something, women. That's why I said if you got children, love them. Love them. Love them. And we have a lot of deadbeat dads here. You know, a man can live in the same house with his children and still that child be neglected. That child still feel rejected because he's never there. He's, he's there to go to bed, eat, and watch TV. That's it. But far as spending time with his daughter and his son, far as talking and communicating with them, and the man being the head of the household is supposed to train the child up. The man's supposed to sit the family down, pray with them, preach to them. That's something I never understood. <laughs> You got a lot of pastors that get up in the church and preach behind a pulpit. They got a wife and they got children. They never at home sit down, open that Bible up and teach their children the word of God and their wives. It is the man's responsibility to teach their children. You standing up trying to teach somebody else something over a pulpit. It first should start at home. And 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 that's the you're supposed to be as the man supposed to be the head of the household supposed to be the priest of the home. He's supposed to sit his family down, pray with them, teach them the word of God, teach, talk to his daughter, spend time communicate with his daughter, spend time communicate with his son. I thank God for my husband. We have a little girl and she's eight. Thank you, Jesus. Be nine in a couple of days. Thank you, Lord. It's been nine years. I don't have a baby anymore. But uh, 
my husband, I look at the relationship that my husband does with her. And he had to learn and grow in that because he didn't have a father. <laughs> so he never had nobody to, to train him or teach him or even saw it done. But he's he I see him as he's working toward trying to build that relationship and, and also parenting, being being the disciplinary father, but also being the father there to pick her up, hug her every day. Give her sugar, as she say, and tell her how pretty she is and talk to her about the word of God. My husband teaches us Bible class at night. We have Bible study and prayer in our house. And I thank God for that because it's the word that's going to keep us. It's the word that's going to keep us. Hallelujah. Mm, my God, my God. But anyway, have to throw that in too. Healing is provided through the cross. Shame and rejection are two of the most common and deepest emotional wounds that humanity suffers. Especially us women, we suffer bad. Like I said, I'm sure men do too, but I have a women's ministry, so I'm only ministering to the women. And I was reading a book it's, um, by Derek Prince, Brought with the Blood. I thank God for Pastor Derek Prince. He's he's deceased now, gone on to be with the Lord, no doubt. I, I don't have no doubt. And um, I looked at him, and I, I don't watch too many different preachers. I really just don't, because I, I can't just take anything in my spirit. I just can't take anything. And he's an older, older man, and his teachings have really blessed me. I mean, when I'm listening to Pastor Derek, I get my pen, I get my notepad, I'm taking notes. I mean, I'm, I'm going back in my concordance after I finish watching it. I'm downloading videos while I wait on in the car on my door to come out of school. I'm waiting. I'm downloading videos on my Kindle Fire, listening to the word. I'm getting the word in my ear gate. I'm getting the word in my eye gate. I'm studying what he's teaching. It's so sad to say, but it's hard to find that now. You can't find uh, the type of teaching that he does uh, now. You just can't find it. The older preachers back in the old days. <laughs> Now you get his worldliness and prosperity. God finna bless you. God gonna do this. Okay. You should have blown. Air preacher said. You should have. The stuff you been through. You should have done blown your brains out. Uh, Okay preacher man. I didn't blow my brains out. I'm still here. And I'm still suffering. I'm still going through hell. So what now? <laughs> I didn't blow my brains out. <laughs> okay. But anyway. But that's what. I mean that's all you get. It's entertainment and garbage god gonna bless you god not gonna god has already blessed you you're blessed if you're even saved you're blessed but yes god will bless you if you're obedient to him you have benefits you have promises but the problem is you got a false prophet or a false pastor or whoever up telling the people what they want to hear god is getting ready to bless you well not if you keep being disobedient and rebelling against him ain't he getting ready to curse you you're going to be under a curse. Why are people always preaching what God going to bless, 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 and bless? Don't you know there's an other side to that? God will curse, 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 curse too. God will kill, 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 kill. Get your Bible. Read it. Glory. Hallelujah. Well, thank you, Jesus. I want to walk in the abundance life. I ain't talking about materialist. I'm talking about I want to. I'm, I'm free to praise, free to worship. Oh, thank you. Rivers of water flowing from my belly. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I want to walk in the power of the Holy Ghost. I want to want these signs to follow like the word said. Lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. I want to I want to cast out demons, praise God. I don't want to sit here and talk about talk about it. Or jump and shout, spitting and swallowing, talking about God is good, God is doing this and good. But what, what is he doing in your life? What, what has changed about you? Have you been delivered? Well, if you have been delivered, then why are you still fornicating? I mean, come on. Let's keep this real. Oh, I had to go here, y'all. Y'all should have known. Y'all who know me and listen to me, if the Holy Ghost lead me another way, I may start teaching one thing. I'm probably going to end up another whole different way because he know what you need. I don't know you. I don't know you. I don't know who look at these videos. All I know is I have to say what thus said the Lord, and I ain't scared to say it. <laughs> I ain't scared at all I'm gonna say it The truth shall make you free women 
I want to see y'all women walking the power of the Holy Ghost. But the only way that's going to happen is if you give yourself up, your will, turn it over to God. Let him deliver you. Let him heal you. Let him make you free. Make you a vessel of honor and not dishonor. Not according to rules and regulations of a denomination, but according by the word of God. We are clean through the word. Sanctified. Hallelujah. I like that word. Sanctified means clean. It don't have nothing to do with my outside adornments of wearing long skirts and tennis shoes. I had to throw that in there. But let me tell you something. I had this one lady and my heart went out to her. She said she had all her this little stuff out, the little breasts and everything, nipples, everything just showing. Beautiful young lady. And she said this. She said, well, me and my husband, we go, we do youth stuff and we do this and we do that. And she's an actor. And she said, but if I had, she said, I don't wear, she said, I don't wear, if God told me not to wear something, I wouldn't wear it. And my heart dropped because I'm like, okay, he did. If you read your word, modest apparel. There's nothing modest about you showing your nipples and your breasts off to the public. And if you had any kind of a husband that had any kind of respect for himself or you and really loved you, he would not have let his wife go out there looking any kind of way. Now, if a man let his wife go out there showing nipples and breasts and butt cheeks and, and, and cootie curves, he don't love you. He don't love you. Because... Ain't no man want no want no other want his wife going out showing all this to the world. That's for him and him only to see. Hallelujah. I said, now she don't have a relationship with God. And I really believe she had a, a real pure heart. I really believe that if she knew the truth, if if the man she was sitting under really told her the truth, she wouldn't do it. Because she know what God's word say. But see, the thing about it is, is she don't know what God's word say. And that's where a lot of people in the body of Christ is today. You don't really even know what the word of God says. All you know is for somebody to get up in there and quote, squint and holler. You learn a few scriptures, post them on Facebook, but you really don't know the word of God. You don't know it. You don't rightly divide the word of God. You don't study to show yourself approved. You just read it. You don't have time to read. And you don't have time to study because you barely have time to do anything else because you're doing worldliness and you're you're ripping and running. You're doing this. You're doing that. And you don't have time to sit down and study the word of God like he told you. That's why you're so uh, so many people are so deceived. They so take face value. Whatever that preacher get behind that box and say, I just believe it because he won't lie to me or she won't lie to me. The devil is a lie. The devil is a lie. Many women and men deceived because they don't know the word of God. They don't know the word of God. But anyway, I'm going to get back to shame. Shame is a painful feeling of guilt for improper behavior, something regrettable. And I see now it's time for me to move on to my next segment. <laughs> so I'm going to finish up shame on there. I'm trying not to do them so long so I can upload them faster like this. Um, so I'm going to go to my next segment, which is going to be segment five. So hope to see you on there. We're going to talk about shame. Love you.